Here's the derivation of the expression of the exergy for a closed system. We start the derivation by considering a system that's at current temperature T and P with an environment surrounding the system at temperature T naught, P naught. We're very much interested in calculating the work that comes out of the combined system, combined meaning the system and its environment, that can be used to lift a weight in a gravitational field, turn a shaft, or do some other useful work. Now, this system can do some work, as I've shown in red, pushing back the environment. That's a non-useful work. We really need the work that's out of the combined system, not just pushing back the environment, but that's out of the system and the environment, that combined system. So we're interested in calculating W sub C. What we'll do is we'll continue to apply first and second law balances for different components. So the first we do is for the combined system, the energy balance for the combined system. So the change in energy of the combined system is equal to any heat transfer during the process. For the combined system, there is no heat transfer in or out of the environment, well, from the environment to the surroundings or anything else, that's zero, minus that work that we're interested in. So this work that we're interested in is equal to the negative, the change of the energy of the combined system. Well, we can express the change in the energy of the combined system as a change in energy of the system plus energy change of the environment. So it's delta U of the system, delta Ke, delta Pe of the system. Likewise, delta U plus Ke, Pe of the environment. Well, there is no kinetic or potential energy of the environment either at the beginning or at the end of the process, so those two are zero. But we do have the change in internal energy of the environment. Okay, so that term we'll have to deal with. We come over here. Our process starts with the system at temperature T and P, so we look up U, initial state, and the final U, and this delta U, is when the internal energy has gone to, of the system is calculated at U naught, which means it's at thermal equilibrium and, and uh, mechanical equilibrium. The system temperature is now T naught and the pressure is now P naught. So that's how you have the change in U. Well, the change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy to begin with, subtract that from the kinetic energy when it's at the dead state, in thermal and mechanical equilibrium with the environment. Well, that Ke naught is zero, so we don't even write it in here. It's just minus Ke initial. Likewise, for the potential energy. All these first terms are for the system. This change in internal energy for the environment, we'll have to work on that first by doing a first law for the environment only. We see that the first law is the change in U of the environment. That's what we're looking for, is equal to the the integral of the heat transfer into the environment that's not coming from anything but from the system. It, it can only come from the system to the environment minus the integral of the work out of the environment. Well, the work that's out of the environment is really this boundary work exchange between the system and the environment here. So it's by the environment on the system staying with that sign convention in thermodynamics. So let's expand each of these terms first. The heat transfer that's going into the environment is what's coming out of the system. I didn't put a subscript SYS right here, but you could, but then it gets many subscripts. and There's already so many subscripts. So uh, we see that what comes out or into the environment is what's coming out of the system or negative into the system. And then for the work term, well, the integral del W environment is the integral from initial state to dead state, constant pressure of the environment, dV of the environment. So that pressure comes outside the integral. It's just a very simple integral, P naught, V naught minus V, but both of these Vs are the environment. Well, the change in the volume of the environment is related to the change in the volume of the system. If there's a positive change in the volume of the environment, there is a con consequential a negative change in the volume of the system. So we make that change from here to here. So this V now is the volume of the system, where this V right here was the volume of the environment. So we can um, update our first law 
for the environment only, change in internal energy of the environment only is equal to minus the integral of del Q, where this is from the perspective of the system, plus P naught times V naught minus V, where both of those volumes are of the system volume. So the volume of the system at the dead state minus the volume of the system initially. To uh, continue to work on this equation, we apply the second law only to the environment. So here it is, the change in entropy of the environment is equal to the integral of del Q into the environment divided by T naught. Well, del Q into the environment is minus del Q out of or into the system. Uh, that was right here. Plus any entropy generation in the environment. So what we take this equation, multiply it by T naught, make this substitution for del Q's, rearrange and you get the integral del Q is equal to T naught change in entropy of the environment minus T naught sigma or entropy generation in the environment. Substitute that for here and you get a simpler expression for the change in internal energy of the environment. There it is. Now finally we take that and substitute into here. I'll need to scroll down. And what we find is an updated expression for the change in energy of the combined system. There it is. I'm not going to read each term. But we need to continue to simplify it. So we do a second law analysis for the entire system. Here it is. So we have no heat transfer from the entire system. So that's zero. The change in entropy of the combined system is a change in entropy of the system plus a change in entropy of the environment. And then you have two entropy generation terms, one associated with in the environment, one in the system itself. You then multiply this equation by T naught, as shown. And then you can substitute these two terms for these two terms. And now you've gotten rid of the entropy generation in the environment and the entropy change in the environment. And now you have the change in the energy of the combined system in terms of U naught and U and kinetic energy and potential energy and T naught and delta S. All of these are properties of the system and not properties of the environment. So we'll scroll down a little more. So what we find is we can express Remember, we, that useful work out of the combined system is the negative of the change in energy of the combined system. So that useful work out is equal to this property right here minus T naught times any irreversibilities associated with the process. So if sigma is equal to zero, if there are no irreversibilities, then you subtract nothing and you get the maximum useful work out of the combined system. That's the maximum you could get. And we see that it's just simply a, uh, um, based only on the current conditions of the system and its property values of when it comes into thermal equilibrium with the environment. So this is defined as the exergy of the system. Here it is, E. That's the equation we set out to, to derive. And we do find that the interpretation is the exergy is equal to that maximum useful work out of the combined system. That work can raise a, gra uh, a weight in the gravitational field, turn the shaft, generate electricity, or other useful work. 